I remember, while I was waiting to hear back from my first job in cybersecurity, staying up till 2 a.m. every night on a work trip, sitting outside in the freezing cold in Boston, watching as some kid taught me how to do AWS security. I was out of my element. I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. I was scared that I couldn't meet up to the requirements that were being given to me, and I felt like I just had to do what it takes to get done. Now, five years later, as someone who's a leader in the cloud security field, let me tell you what I did to prepare and how you can become a cybersecurity engineer with no experience. What's different about what I'm going to talk about is I think there are three general approaches to getting into cybersecurity that are all different paths that are going to be your best chance depending on where you're at in your career. So whether you're someone who's just starting out college and considering cybersecurity for a career, or you're someone that's looking to make a career change from another field, or you're in an adjacent field like systems engineering or development, I want to be able to walk you through in the next 10 minutes how you can pivot into cybersecurity with the minimal amount of training, effort, work, really making it as clear as possible how to make that transition happen. First, I'm gonna to talk to people who aren't in tech, who have no experience in security or technology or development. Maybe you're just considering cybersecurity as a major at your college. This is someone who's completely out of the technology field. And I know how intimidating it can be, but let me tell you that you are getting into the right field. I wish that sooner on in my career, I had focused on getting into the tech sector as opposed to working technical jobs in other places. If you are just starting in college and you're considering cybersecurity or even development work more broadly or systems engineering, you are choosing a great path for your career and your life to allow you to have a lot of flexibility and earning potential. It is really a great industry to be in. Don't let news of layoffs or things scare you away. It is an excellent field and you have what it takes to do it. So for the person just starting in cybersecurity, what I would say is to take what I'll call the security path. This is typically in the beginning phase as a security analyst. That's the first job you're going to be looking for. The skills for this are really intimidating when you look at a job posting. They're going to say things like wanting security plus, which is the intro certificate for the security field. And they're going to talk a lot about having experience with networking, systems administration, some kind of technical experience. But really at the end of the day, they do not want an expert in any one of these fields. They want someone who at the end of the day, all being a security analyst is, is getting an alert from a system and having the deductive skills to look up to find what probably happened to trigger that alert. It really is more about your logical and deductive reasoning than it is about your mastery over any single technical subject area. No one in cybersecurity is an expert in every single domain, and we all rely on each other every single day. So don't be intimidated by job postings that require different years of Linux experience or Windows experience or network experience or security experience. All you need to know is that you are getting an alert from a security management tool and you are expected to respond to it, which is usually notifying the correct people to look into it to get more information. Over time, as your career develops, you will become more comfortable working directly with the technologies that are triggering the alerts because you're more used to working with the teams that do them. So the best skills you can work on are both deductive reasoning and how to communicate well with people to be likable and friendly because they're going to be the main ones giving you the information you need to develop in your career. Some great technologies to get familiar with to put you ahead to help you stand out ahead of others. First, the Security Plus is the baseline certificate for this arena for a reason. It's a great baseline certificate to achieve to go after. But it's not just that. Really, Security Plus in some ways has become outdated with the advancement of cloud technologies. And you might be intimidated thinking, I need to go become an AWS cloud security expert. And that's certainly a path you can do. But instead of trying to rush straight to that end goal, you're going to be a lot better served by learning just modern development processes. So if you can learn containers, Kubernetes, AWS, GCP, Azure, these technology baselines and just the general understanding of them are going to help you more than any specific specialization. So really, I'd suggest that take your time, go through the path to become a cybersecurity analyst and really spend time learning those baseline technologies as much as you can. And don't be intimidated to apply to network to get to know people to get that entry level position. It's going to be a great position that is high paying and will be a great opportunity to grow in cybersecurity. Second, I wanna to talk to someone who has a background that's more familiar to my own. I came up into security via help desk, into systems engineering, into cloud engineering, into cloud security engineering. And so my approach was really focused on networking, I think is a great baseline skill to have across anything because it's 
I think, the hardest part of system engineering. And it's the skill that a lot of modern DevOps and cloud teams really don't have because the cloud makes everything so easy for you that having the understanding network layer of what's happening is a great fundamental skill to have. Really what's important about trying to transition out of systems engineering and into security is trying to first understand the technologies that security teams are using and volunteer to help set those up, to help manage them. On the endpoint side, this is stuff like antivirus, right? It sounds like a boring, simple thing, installing antivirus. But as these technologies have become more advanced as endpoint detection response tools, you can really put on a resume that you were the EDR systems manager and the lead incident responder for those incidents. And that's how you can frame it on a resume such that you really are the lead for a major component of cybersecurity. Same with if you tackle vulnerability management. That is a huge cybersecurity issue that typically systems engineers are managing. So vulnerability management, endpoint detection, and then the final bucket there is the SIM technologies. If you volunteer to help, then you're really standing out in the fact that you know how these underlying technologies work and your pivot into becoming a security engineer is the job title you're gonna wanna look for, very easy. If you wanna get really good at SIM technologies, that's where you can look for detection engineering roles, writing rules to create detections to alert when malicious activity is taking place. This is a great long-term path to get into things like detection research, cloud research, there's a lot of great opportunities there. Really, it's a lot of this transition is just about framing your experience in the lens of security. You're probably already dealing with things like compliance issues, regulatory issues, user issues like passwords, endpoint security, Okta management for SAML. These are all things that can be framed as security issues if you just think to do that. The final path is probably the easiest path to get into security, but I think people can be more intimidated for it, and that's the development path into security. Security teams around the world have a dire need for application security developers. Any security team is both ecstatic and desperate for developers who care about security enough to get involved and try to find and fix issues. Heck, if you are a developer at a company and you volunteer to just join the security team, I would be shocked if you were ever told no. But if you were, many organizations are building what's called a security champions program, where developers are selected upon their teams to become security champions for the org. This is something you can easily start yourself, and being a developer security champion is a great way to frame your experience such that if you're applying for a new role, you can easily move into application security, product security, cloud security. Those lines are all really blurred. And so don't feel like you can't apply for a security job just because you're a developer. So I want to talk about some things I didn't say, right? I didn't say getting those hard to get cloud security specialty certifications. Those simply aren't necessary right now because the need for security engineers is broadly so large. The other thing I didn't say is coding. And that's because coding experience is always a plus to any security engineer, really to anyone's role, but it's not a fundamental skill that most organizations are looking for to get into security. In your day-to-day -day workload, you are usually not using any language on a regular ongoing basis. Of course, it does make you more valuable, so you can think of it through that lens, but you really don't need it. The final two industries I didn't recommend are red teaming or pen testing and GRC or governance risk and compliance. First, with GRC, this can be a great entry-level position for people who are non-technical in the sense that you can get hired and know very little about how to administer a server, how to tighten network controls, how to implement anything. You really can get in the door with very little experience. The downsides, however, with getting into this field, I think are pretty severe. The first is that there's less opportunities generally to get into it. This is because most companies might have a larger security of 5, 10, 15 people, but the GRC team that corresponds to that is only one, two, or three people. So the amount of opportunities, especially as the market has dried up a little bit, is a lot harder to do. On the flip side, those careers will always be available because compliance is always there. It's just that generally organizations will have less of those positions. Second, I do think that there are less opportunities to grow in GRC. It is really hard, in my opinion, to learn the security stuff from the GRC role. While it sounds good in theory that you can go through these security controls and learn them as you're going and become more technical over time, in reality, the vast majority of your time is spent answering customer questionnaires and pinging different engineering groups to figure out the answers to those questions instead of ever really learning yourself how to implement them or get hands-on with the technology. So you can be really handicapped in terms of your growth opportunity once you're in those positions. And that goes into the third reason that I would hesitate to get into GRC as an entry-level position, 
And that's because you still have to make another pivot again. And the whole reason you're watching this video is to get into cybersecurity, not to get into like an adjacent cybersecurity-esque field and then have to pivot back into it anyways. It is always going to be difficult and stressful to try to pivot from one career path to another. And so it's easier to get that done right away if you're just entering the field instead of trying to get into something that might be in the short term a little bit easier, but ultimately hampers your ability to transition later. The reason I didn't talk about pen testing or red teaming as an entry level position is because you can end up having to spend a lot of time really getting good at a lot of things that are not otherwise helpful. So generally the skill set for pen testers is getting really good at Linux, getting really good at web applications. And these two skills definitely will help you in general, right? If you're a systems administrator, that's great. If you are getting into web development, that's great. But notice that those two areas already have other pivot points available to them that I think there are just more job opportunities because most large companies still do not have a dedicated red teaming function or a pen testing function into their organization. So there's a much smaller pool of companies that can hire you and and while being a bug bounty hacker can be fun and rewarding, it's not a great option for someone just trying to break into cybersecurity because really they're gonna be able to get other jobs more easily out of it. Those can be that can be a great transition if you're already pretty technical, if you're already doing things like Linux admin, or if you're already a developer. Those can be really fun and cool opportunities, but I wouldn't say that they're like a solid standard way to get into the industry. So just to make a few summary points. First, it's really important to not get overwhelmed at the idea of this role being a technical one. Fundamentally, security is not the most technical field that you can be getting into. There is plenty of stuff to learn that I've outlined in this video. There's plenty of great certificates, but don't fall for the people. If you go and ask just online, how can I get into cybersecurity? You're gonna get answers like, learn Python, you're useless without it, or get really good at Linux, you can't do anything if you don't. And that's simply not true. There are plenty of different avenues that you can slowly grow into a better and better technical person, while fundamentally the skill set that you can talk about during an interview is deductively thinking like an attacker, thinking like someone who knows how to analyze logs, reach out to teams, be good to work with, be personable, and networking. These skills can get you farther than saying, I know Python, or I'm really good at Linux. Second, on that technical point, I don't wanna give the idea that I don't think the technical stuff matters. It does, it's just not of primary importance. Security Plus, if you're looking for a certification, is still the best way to go for really anyone in the industry just trying to get in. But I'll have you know that I don't have Security Plus. I don't have AWS Security. Not because I don't know the material, but just because what matters more than those things is your ability to present yourself as someone who understands how cybersecurity works. And you get that through the hands-on experience more than any advanced certification. So step one to getting into cloud security is not getting the AWS security certification. Most companies will hire someone who has DevOps or container experience, who knows how web applications work, who can deploy them, and understand security through that practitioner lens is gonna be much more appealing than someone who's mastered a very specific certification. So just learn generally how the practitioners think and during that process, take notes of how can I do this securely, right? Maybe follow a tutorial on how to deploy a Django web app and take special notes of how can I secure a Django web app. These are ways in which you can slowly build your skill set with a special emphasis on security. Finally, a really cool new area to get into with cybersecurity is securing AI. And I have a video about that right over here. Go look.